Can you hear me well? Great, great. Okay, uh, I'm going to be exploring listening today. We're going to be looking at the listening skill. Um, everywhere that I've worked in the world, I think that listening is a key component of language learning. Um, and I know that in Palestine, um, listening isn't tested very much, but I think that um, it's still a learning tool. There's so much language that learners can pick up from listening, from doing listening activities. And you have a fantastic resource with English for Palestine that has lots, lots of listening activities in it. But today, I'd like to focus on a different kind of listening. I'd like to focus on a listening which we can do alongside the course book, which is uh, what we might call live listening, a listening which is more spontaneous and which is more about interaction between teacher and learners. And I'd like to begin with a, an activity, a, a listening activity. Okay, so I'm going to talk for a minute and I'd like you to listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to say lots of things about myself and I'd like you to try and remember everything that I say without writing anything down. Okay? I'd like to try and remember as much as you can of what I say. And everything that I say is going to begin with this. I really enjoy teaching because blah, blah, blah. Okay? You ready? Okay, I really enjoy teaching because teaching is an outlet for creativity. I really enjoy teaching because uh, teaching isn't the worst paid job in the world. It's not the best, but it's, it's not the worst either. Um, I really enjoy teaching because um, I like meeting people from different places and people are always different, so I enjoy meeting new people. I really enjoy teaching because um, I like bossing people around. I really enjoy teaching because um, I never know exactly what's going to happen in the classroom. Um, and I really enjoy teaching because it allows me to go to conferences like this and meet other teachers. Okay, great. I think that's about a minute. All right, could you, with your partner, could you talk to the person next to you and use this frame? He really enjoys teaching because blah, blah, blah. See how many you can remember. Okay, oh, great, great. Is there anyone who thinks they can remember most of those sentences? Yeah? Could we just... Could... Hi. Hi. Um, you really like teaching because uh, it's an outlet for creativity. And you really like teaching because um, you cannot expect what would happen in a classroom. Mm -hmm. And it will give you the opportunity to attend such conferences mm -hmm. and to meet different people. And it's not the worst uh, paid job ever, mm -hmm. but it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Palestine is, is it? Yeah. And okay. uh, you can uh, boss people. Boss but people around. Yeah, 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 boss people around. Yeah. Is that, is that, okay, is, okay. Is, that all, is that everything? Yeah. One more? It is also capture useful because you need other backgrounds and you can find different captures. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you said that. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Okay, great. All right, so. Um, that's a kind of controlled listening exercise. It's controlled in terms of the language. Now, I've done that in that way for you as teachers, but it could be, if we're working with learners, we might say, say we've been practicing the present simple in the course book, or the past simple, we might do this as a listening exercise for that area of grammar. So we might say, you know, um, I live in a house with uh, two bedrooms, uh, I have a garden, 
um, I don't have a pet, um, I'm married, that kind of thing. Or say we were focusing on past simple, we might have things like uh, yesterday, I, blah, 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 uh, or could be future forms, at the weekend, I'm going to do something. So it's a very nice controlled listening exercise and it comes from the teacher. So it's teacher talking to the learners and the learners trying to process that language. The next stage of this activity is that you're going to do it as a pair work activity. Okay? I'm going to give you a different framework to use. So that was the framework that I used. I'd like you to use this framework. Can you um, work with a partner? So A and B. If that's uh, difficult, then it could be three, a three instead. All right? And we're going to use the framework, I'm good at teaching because. Okay? So can you decide who's, who's number one and who's number two in your pair? All right? Who are the number ones? Put your hand up if you're number one in your pair. I, can't, I can only see a few people. Okay, who's number one in your pair? All right, so number ones, you're going to speak for a minute and you're going to say, I'm good at teaching because blah, blah, blah. All right, number two, you're going to listen to them and try to remember what they say. All right, I'm going to time you for a minute. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so ready, go. Okay, all right, great. Let's, let's, let's call that a minute. Okay, so number two, you're now going to feed back to number one, and you're going to say, you're good at teaching because blah, 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 what you remember, okay? Okay, all right, good. Uh, sorry if I'm stopping you too early. Um, did, you, could you, did you find you could remember what your partner said? Yes. I mean, it's interesting how sometimes you can remember more when you, the listener can remember more than the person who spoke, sometimes. Um, and there's an interesting thing that happens with that activity that, you know, I think one of the things... You know, listening is important. Listening is very important in the language class. And listening to the teacher or listening to the CD or the tape is also important. But it's also really important that we encourage our learners to listen to each other. Especially if we do pair work activities or, or that kind of thing. We want our learners to listen to what other people in the class are saying, not just what the teacher is saying. So this is a good activity for encouraging learners to do that. Um, okay, good. Now, I'd like to... We could do it the other way. Um, with a class, we'd do it the other way round, so the other person speaks. But I'd like to move on now. And um, I'd like to move on to doing something physical. Um, I think we can also... One way of livening up listening is to bring in a physical element. So I'd like everyone to stand up, please. And if you can put down your papers somewhere. Okay. All right, so I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a very simple story. And I would like you to physicalize the story. So you're going to move according to what I say in the story. Now, you haven't got much space, but you can still do it in that space. That's fine. Okay, are you ready? Okay. I was walking in the forest. 
I saw a box on the ground in front of me. I picked it up. I slowly opened the lid. A bird flew out and hit me in the face. I looked inside. Wow. It was full of treasure. I filled up my pockets as quickly as I could. Oh no! Someone was coming. I turned around and ran. <laughs> ran! Okay, good, good. All right, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it really quickly now. Okay? I was walking in the forest. I saw a box on the ground in front of me. I picked it up. I slowly opened the lid. Ah! A bird flew out and hit me in the face. I looked inside. Wow, it was full of treasure. I filled up my pockets as quickly as I could. Oh no, someone was coming. I turned around and ran. Okay, good, good. Now, have a seat again, have a seat. Okay, now. The nice thing about that activity is that we process the language not just with our heads, we process the language with our bodies. And our bodies have a memory. Not just our brains, our bodies have a memory. Uh, so I'm going to see if we can remember the text a little bit. So one thing we might do, we might use this as a, uh, a kind of writing task. We might show the students a text like this, where each space represents one letter and ask them if they can write out the text. So what would the first line be? I was walking in the forest, yeah? But we could also use it as a, as a simple spoken reconstruction task. So something like this. All right? So just with the person next to you, can you see if you can recall the text? Spoken. Let's see if you can go through it. Okay, all right, good, I'm going to stop you there. Now, the nice thing about this activity from the teacher's perspective is I can see that you're thinking. That looks great, you know, when you're teaching, don't you just love those moments when you're teaching and you look at your class and it looks like the class are processing, they're thinking about language, and this is a very good way for getting students to think about accurate language and making them notice all the small words that they sometimes miss out. Let's just quickly go through it. So, I was walking in the forest. I saw a box on the ground in front of me. I picked it up. I slowly opened the lid. Ah! A bird flew out and hit me in the face. I looked inside. Wow! It was full of treasure. I filled up my pockets as quickly as I could. 
oh no, someone was coming. I turned around and ran. Okay, great. All right, so what we've got here is a story. What we've got here is a story. And we know that stories are a really powerful tool for language teaching and learning. Uh, Mario Rinpoche says that um, stories are the oldest teaching technique in existence. Since the beginning of time, we have used stories to educate young people. Uh, so we're going to have a story now. And I'd like to ask you if I, I can tell you two stories. I can tell you a horror story about a mouse or a family of mice, or I can tell you a love story about a worm. A worm. You want both? Which, which one would you prefer to hear first? A love story about a worm or a horror story about a mouse? Okay, put your hands up if you prefer the worm story. Put your hands up if you prefer the mouse story. Okay, you're very romantic, all of you. Oh, no, no, sorry, you're horror. You, you want the horror story. Okay, you like horror stories. Okay, right, I'm going to give you the horror story then. So once upon a time, there were a family of mice. There was a mother mouse, a father mouse, a son mouse, and a daughter mouse. Every day, the father mouse went to work. He was an English teacher. <laughs> he worked very hard every day teaching English. And the mother stayed at home. And she was a housewife. They were a very traditional family. Every day, the mother cleaned the kitchen. She cooked dinner. She scrubbed the floors, she polished the windows, she made the house beautiful. And the children played outside in the kitchen. They played, you know, their, their house was in the corner. You know the little hole where they go? And their house was in there and they, they, the children came out and played in the kitchen among the, the people. And one day, the children were playing in the kitchen. And suddenly, the son, Mouse, rushed back into the hole. And he said, Mum, Mum, quick, there's a massive uh, cat. And it's got big claws and big uh, legs. And it's got huge teeth. And it's, it's hungry. It's, it's drooling. It's, it's a hungry cat. I, I'm worried. What should we do? And the mother mouse said, don't worry, take it easy, relax, no problem. And the, the, the son mouse said, look, but, but it's a big cat and it's hungry. And, um, you know, I, I can't fight a cat, what am I going to do? The mother mouse said, relax, take it easy, no problem. And the mother mouse went to the hole of their little house and she couldn't, she didn't show herself, she just went to the corner of the hole so that the cat could hear her and she went and the cat, thinking there was a dog, turned around and ran and ran and ran and ran and was never seen again. And the mother mouse took her children together, sat down with the children, and said, didn't I always tell you how important it is to learn a foreign language? <laughs> okay, so there's a nice little story about the power of, um, well, the importance of learning languages, maybe. Um, I'm sure that's not the only reason we want to learn other languages, to, to scare people away. Um, okay, now, an interesting thing about stories, which is very different from um, watching a video, is that when we hear a story, we create our own images. And um, the British psychologist, Eric Sigmund, 
suggests that this is a really important stage in children's development, that they have oral material without images. You know, if, if you uh, watch a Tom and Jerry cartoon or you watch any kind of cartoon, you're given the visual material. So there's far less creativity going on. You're not having to create the images. But when someone's telling you a story, you're having to do some work. It's nice work, but you're having to do some work. You're having to think, what does the mouse look like? What does the kitchen look like? Etc. Yeah. So could you just quickly just tell the person next to you, how did you imagine the mouse? Did you imagine a real uh, kind of dirty mouse that you might find somewhere? Or did you imagine a cartoon character? Or Just have a chat with the person next to you. How did you imagine the mouse? And how did you imagine that house as well? Okay. Okay, did you, did you find that you imagined it in the same way or in different ways? Different ways, yeah? I mean, this is the interesting thing. Uh, we are, we're helping learners create images in their minds. And I think a lot of what we do as teachers should be doing that. We should be helping people to create images. We remember images better than we remember other forms of data. So if we can get people in our classes creating their own images, we're doing something that is going to be memorable for the students. Uh, do you want to hear the worm story? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I just need something. Okay, so once upon a time, I'm going to do it with that mic actually. Once upon a time, there was a field, and the field was dry, and it hadn't rained for many, many days, many weeks, and many months. It hadn't rained. And then suddenly, the rain came. And when the rain came, a small animal came out of the ground. It's not a snake. It's a worm. Yeah? Can you see it? And the worm came out of the ground. And the worm was so happy to see the rain. And it started, you know, really dancing in the rain and enjoying himself and, you know, drinking. Um, he hadn't had a drink for a long time and he was so happy and he loved the smell of the grass. You know that smell of the grass that you get when it's been raining? Yeah. Beautiful smell and the, there's lovely trees around and everything and it was a, a wonderful spring day and he was really enjoying himself and then suddenly when things couldn't get much better, suddenly what happened? Another worm appeared. And the first worm looked at the second worm. And the second worm looked at the first worm. And their eyes met across the floor. And the first worm fell in love immediately with the second worm. And the second worm fell in love with the first worm. Love at first sight, exactly. And the first one was, you know, overcome with emotion. He said, oh, you're so beautiful, to the second one. And the second one said to the first one, you're so beautiful too. And the first one said, and you've got a great personality. And the second one said, yeah, you've got a great personality too. And, you know, you've got a nice house. And, you know, I, I, I really think we should get together. And the second one said, I think we should get together too. And the first one said, will you marry me? <laughs> and the second one said, it's true that I really like you, you're handsome. 
you've got good family background, everything's good, you've got a nice body, but I cannot marry you. Why? said the first worm. Because, said the second worm, I am your tail. <laughs> okay. Okay, now, um, with this kind of material, um, I think there's a different kind of process that's going on when we listen to these kind of things than, than uh, with um, other kinds of listening material. And I'm not devaluing the listening material that you have in your course books, I'm just saying this is a different process and it has other benefits. I want to give you an example of a train journey that I experienced recently. This is a train journey in England, and during the train journey, I listened to three different announcements. And the first announcement went something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We are very sorry to inform you that the 1839 to London Paddington is delayed by approximately 33 minutes. First Great Western apologises for the delay to your journey and the inconvenience caused. Okay. So what do you notice about this piece of listening material? It's a recording. It's not a real person. It's an apology, but it's not a real person. It's a machine talking. Does this happen to in, in Palestine? In, in, on, it happens often on telephone conversations that you're talking to a machine. And you can tell it's a machine by the way that the intonation works with numbers, for instance. So for me, it doesn't sound like an apology. If it's a machine talking to me, it's not a real apology. Okay. A little while later on the train, the, um, the ticket inspector on the train made this comment. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments' time, we'll be arriving into Newton Abbott. So just take a moment to ensure that you do have all items of personal belongings before you leave the train, and mind the gap between the train and the platform edge. Newton Abbott, your next station stop in a few moments' time. Okay, so uh, again, it's an announcement by the, by the train, but, or by the person on the train. Um, and it's, for me, it's better because it's a real person talking. But it's still kind of, you know, you feel like this person says this at every station. Every station that he gets to, he says the same thing. Repeated over and over again. Maybe he doesn't really... He's not really worried if you uh, leave your belongings behind because he's just saying it because he has to. A few minutes later in the journey, we had, I heard this announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to apologise for that unscheduled stop there at Castle Carey. We did get a warning as we came into the station of some children playing on the line. We were just waiting for confirmation that the children have now safely been removed. So apologies again for, this, for the disruption to your journey there. Okay, so what had happened was there were some children playing on the line and the train had stopped and we didn't know why the train had stopped. So this announcement came afterwards. And I, th I think that you listen in a diff I listened in a different way to this third piece of information. Because there was a shared context. Everybody wanted to know what had happened, why the train stopped. We were all motivated to hear, and, and the answer was provided. So I think, you know, we need to have this kind of listening, the C kind of listening, we need to have it in language classes. I mean, somebody just said to me before we were speaking, somebody in the audience said, you know, in Palestine, we need to focus on speaking, real speaking and real listening. Um, 
And this, you know, we need this kind of real spoken language and real um, listening as well, where, where, the, where there's a purpose, a real purpose to listening. So, uh, one thing, um, uh, well, one quote that kind of ties in with this really nicely is Scott Thornbury's quote uh, from The Unbearable Lightness of EFL, where he says, teaching is a dialogic rather than an anti-dialogic or a monologic activity. The saddest complaint ever relayed to me by a student was, our teacher doesn't talk to us. So we have an important role in the class to actually talk to our students, I would say. And that doesn't mean that we need to take up a long time talking about the intricacies of the present perfect continuous. But it might mean that we talk to our students and just say, oh, what happened at the weekend? Or uh, did, you, did you see the um, football match on television last night? Or just, just those kind of interactions with students are very, very important. And I, I would say lots of learning can happen in that. OK, so I'd like to do another activity with you, which involves teacher to student um, interaction, and then we'll, we'll look at it. Um, we'll kind of analyze what's going on afterwards. Okay, so I'd like to tell you a story which is about four Burglars. You know burglars, yeah? Who steal from houses. And they have a very special way of stealing from houses. What they do is they travel by helicopter. Okay? And they land on the roof of the house in their helicopter. Okay? So, they're in their helicopter and they land on the roof of the house, like that, yeah? And then they have a tradition that the first burglar, he goes down to the kitchen of the house. He goes to the kitchen, yeah? And when he gets to the kitchen, he prepares a meal for all of the other burglars, using the food he can find in the house. So what does he find in the house? What, what does he find in the kitchen? Bread, eggs, yogurt, cheese, butter, milk, chicken, and rice. Okay, so he makes um, an omelette, a cheese omelette with the milk and the eggs, um, and uh, with some bread on the side, and he also makes some makluba. <laughs> Can he make makluba with the rice and the chicken? Yes. Okay, so he makes some makluba for the other burglars. While he's preparing that, the second burglar goes to the living room. Okay? In the middle of the house. He goes to the living room, and in the living room, he, he starts to steal what he can find in the living room. So what does he find in the living room? TV. Sofa. The sofa as well, yeah, he's got a very big bag in which you can put all these things. So he puts the TV, the sofa, table, it's a very big bag, laptop, coffee table, dining room table, lots of tables. These burglars are very interested in tables, yeah. Okay, so he puts all the, these things in the bag. And um, the third burglar, he goes to the bedroom of the house. And what does he steal in the bedroom? The bed. Okay, he steals the bed. I think these burglars are kind of furniture, furniture thieves, yeah? So he steals the bed. What else? The cupboards, pillows, blankets. Hairbrushes, jewels. Okay, now we've got something worth some money. Yeah, some jewels, perfume, very expensive perfume. Chanel number five. What? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a very big helicopter. It's a very big helicopter. Uh, also, he picks up the mattress of the bed and he finds lots of money. Lots of money. So they're all very happy. The fourth burglar stays on top of the house. Why does he stay there? To keep watch. To check no one is coming. To check that. To see if the police are coming. What? To see if anyone's coming. And sure enough, on this occasion, the police come. What did the police uh, car make in Palestine? What's the noise of the police car? Sorry. Woo! Okay. Woo! Okay, so the police car comes, and the burglar who's on the roof, he gets a big hammer, and he bangs on the roof with the hammer really hard to warn the others. And they all come back. Hopefully, yeah, they all came back to the top. Now, maybe you're thinking, maybe you're thinking I have some more jacks in here, but there aren't any more jacks. I hope there aren't. <laughs> no? There aren't any more. Do you know how you do that trick? Okay, I'll tell you. It's a very easy trick, and it's a nice one to do in a class. Uh, what you do is you hide three cards which are not jacks between the other ones. So you see you have three cards hidden behind. So when you put the cards on the top of the pack, you put them on the top, actually it's not the jacks that are going down. That's not a jack. That's not a jack. That's not a jack. So the jacks are still on the top. Okay? All right, good. Okay. So, uh, so, um, so that might be what we call a live listening exercise. And that, that um, you know, it's a listening exercise which is very different from a listening exercise which students might have in the course book. And in some ways, it may have some advantages. Let's just look at what those might be. What might some advantages of that kind of listening activity be? Uh, one advantage of it, perhaps, is that there is a visual element. There's a visual element in the, in the uh, activity. So often, when students listen to something on a CD, um, they can't see. There's no, there's no visual clues. So when we're doing this activity, we can see, the students can see the teacher, and they can see the gestures, and they can see the movements, and also they can see the cards. So those are all things which help with the understanding. Is it that one, the next one? Sorry. Which, one, which one's next? Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so... Uh, so another advantage is it's very light on materials and preparation. Now as teachers, we're often very, very busy. We have a lot of time preparing classes, thinking about what we're going to do. This kind of thing, we can just we need to know what the story is, but we don't need to spend a lot of time having, getting a lot of materials or um, thinking about what's going to happen. So that's a real advantage, I would argue. Um, it's also very adaptable. I mean, I could tell that story, I told that story to you as very, very advanced speakers of English, but I could also tell it to quite low-level learners of English. Um, the, the vocabulary and the grammar could be quite simple in that telling of the story. When we're working with um, uh, course book material, sometimes we can't make it, sometimes the level is not quite right. <laughs> for everyone in the class. Maybe it's too easy, or maybe it's too difficult. So the advantage of this is we can adapt it to suit the level. And um, another nice thing about this is what we, we can develop what um, Tim Bowen and Jonathan Marks refer to as secure listening. Lots of the listening that happens in language classes is a test. 
Students are asked to answer the questions or something. Something like this. Students listen, not because they have to answer the questions, but because they're interested and motivated by the topic. And we need to have that kind of listening in our classes too, alongside the other kind. As we said, there's a visual stimulus. There's also physicalisation. I can move, I can show my uh, gestures, that kind of thing. All of those things will help with comprehension. And also there's an element of interactivity. Um, when I was telling the story, the last one, I was able to get suggestions from you. You could put some input into the story. And I think that's a nice thing for learners. If they make some suggestions and then you incorporate them, incorporate them into the story that you're telling. And because of that element of interactivity, I'm able to make online adjustments. So if, the, if I realise that the students aren't understanding what I'm saying, I can slow down. Or I can um, change what I'm saying. I can paraphrase. I can repeat. I might even use a bit of Arabic just to check that people understand a, a, a word, a key word. I might say, for instance, what's burglar in Arabic? Or something like that. Just to check that people understand. Can't really do that with pre-recorded material. And um, another nice thing about this is it can serve as a model for output. Sometimes with um, pre-recorded material, there's a, a big difference between the level of the material and the level of what the learners can do themselves. So with this, for instance, learners could try to tell the magic trick themselves. Even with limited English, they could do that task. They might not be very accurate, might make mistakes, they might not use such complex vocabulary or grammar as the teacher does, but they can still do it. And I want to give you an example of a learner doing that story. So this is a learner who's from um, Saudi Arabia, and he just arrived in Britain and he was in a beginner's class, and he's about 17 years old. And he's in a beginner's class, so I showed him that magic trick, and then I said to him, okay, now, could you retell the magic trick to another student who hasn't seen it? And I recorded him. And, and I'm gonna to read to you how he did it. So, the learner telling the magic trick said, this four boys, okay? And he showed the four cards. This four boys, okay? This come and this upstairs, okay? This go kitchen. Cooking and drink coffee and tea and cook. No problem? The other learner said, no problem. First learner said, Okay, this go bedroom. Second learner. Bathroom? Bedroom. Because change clothes, sleep, revising, no problem? No problem. Okay, this go living room. Because watch film action. This watch people. Come, no come. Okay, this people come, no come. Okay. And car, police come. Nino, 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 Nino. Okay? No problem. No problem. <laughs> this boy, coming guys, coming guys. Come on, police, police coming. Come on. This, one, two, three, four. And at that point, he showed the four jacks again at the top of the pack. So, um... You know, he, he managed to perform the task. You could say, well, his English wasn't very accurate, but I think it was a really nice activity for him to be able to tell a story in English. So what we're doing here, we're modelling something that learners could do themselves. What, what might be nice would be, we tell a simple story to one group or half the class, tell a different story to the other half the class, they tell each other the stories.
Okay. Um, another, another nice thing about this, there's a kind of level of authenticity about the material. The text, the listening text, is created with the people in the room, so it's authentic, um, and hopefully it's going to be quite engaging for the students. We want learners to listen because things are interesting, not just because they're going to be tested on that. Um, a quote here, which, which has really influenced me as a teacher, from Teresa Pika, way back in 1987. Um, and she said that any teacher or method that facilitates a realignment of the traditional roles of teacher and student so that students can take greater initiative or assume more responsibility for their own learning is likely to encourage in-class oral interaction, which in turn can increase comprehension of input. Okay, so that's lots of, um, uh, I mean, put, it, put in much simpler terms, usually in classrooms we modify the input before it gets to the learners. But what Teresa Pika is suggesting is there's a lot of value of talking to our learners and encouraging them to ask questions, to interact with that input. Lots of learning can happen <coughs> through, through doing that. Um, an example of how we might do that in a classroom, uh, this is, we might have a situation where the teacher shows a picture to the, to the rest of the class about something that the teacher knows something about. So this is a picture of my, um, my last day at primary school when I was about 10 years old, 11 years old. Um, and this is me here. Still pretty much the same, haven't changed much. Maybe a few more gray hairs. Um, so uh, what, I would, what I've done with lots of different students, lots of different groups of students is Using a, um, a recorder like this, handheld recorder, I would say to the students, okay, think of some questions that you would like to ask me about this time. Think of some questions you'd like to ask me. They think of questions like, for instance, who was the best teacher? Yeah, what else? What, was I popular then? What? Who was my best friend? Good. What was, what was your favorite subject at school? What was your favorite subject? Yeah. How was your relationship with your teacher? How was your relationship? Yeah. yeah. Who's, who's that man with the glasses? Yeah. <laughs> what? You are, uh, exactly. That's usually the first question <laughs> that people ask. Who was your girlfriend? Or which girl did you like the best? Or, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> um, but, but what we do is we, we help the students to prepare the questions. We get them to think of questions. We might help them with that. They might even ask us things in Arabic. How do you say that in English? They prepare the questions. When they're ready, we ask them to record a question on here. We give the recorder to the learners. They record the question. We take it back and we record an answer. And then we get another question and we record the answer. So in this way, we actually create a piece of listening material. Students can then listen back to it the next day or a few days later and maybe make some notes on it or just listen and see what they understand. And the nice thing about that is, um, you know, recording students is really nice for them to hear their own voices using English. Um, a teacher I was working with, I think it was you, wasn't it, who was talking about how how much uh, that was, your students enjoyed recording themselves and, and listening to themselves speaking English. Okay, great. How am I doing for time? Five minutes? Okay, uh, I'd like to end with one, another story. And I need some, I need some volunteers for this story. And I, I'd like to have a man and a woman and I, I need you to come up on stage. So can I have a man on stage, please? As quickly as possible. A man, okay, would you please come up? Great. And a woman, the first woman who can get on stage will be 
to tell you a story, uh, I'm going to tell you the story of um, Nasruddin and the dinner party. And this is Nasruddin, here, okay? Are you happy to be Nasruddin? Yes, yeah? of course. And could you be the host of the dinner party? Could you be over here, please? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the story, and um, the characters are going to act out the story as I tell it. And also, if I say, Nasruddin said, blah, 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 can you then repeat what I say, if it's Nasruddin or if okay. the hope? Okay. All right, great. So once upon a time, Nasruddin was working in the fields. He was working very hard. Very, very hard. <laughs> I'm so tired, he said. I'm so tired. Why do I have to work every day? Why do I have to work every day? And then he remembered that there was a dinner party in the evening. Great, he said. Great. There's a dinner party tonight. There is a dinner party tonight. But he didn't have time to go home and get changed. Meanwhile, the host of the dinner party was, was preparing all the food. I need to make some makluba, she said. I need to make some makluba. I need to make some delicious patush. I need to make some delicious patush. Oh no, I forgot to buy the samak. Oh no, I forgot to buy samak. That's a samak. Fish. Fish. <laughs> but she made... Yeah, sorry. But she made a beautiful spread of food. Now, Nasruddin didn't have time to go home, so he went to the party wearing his old, dirty, smelly clothes from work. And he went and he knocked on the door. Knock, knock, knock. The host of the party opened the door. Come in. And Nasruddin walked in. Here is the dinner. But... Are you hungry? Yes. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately the host didn't like Nasruddin's clothes and he was a bit smelly and she said I'm sorry um, mm. she, she didn't give him anywhere to sit you can't sit there she said you can't sit there you can't sit there you can't have any food you can't have any food so, Nasruddin was furious. I'm so furious, he said. I'm so furious. He stormed out of the house. He walked home. When he got to his home, he had a shower. He had a shower. Uh, he put on his best clothes. He combed his hair. Oh, that's a tattoo. He put on some aftershave and some perfume and he smelled, he shaved his beard. He plucked his nostrils. He looked wonderful. And then he, he ironed his shirt while he was wearing it. <laughs> and he went back to the party. And when he got to the party, the host of the dinner party was so pleased to see him. Suddenly, everything changed. She said, oh, Nasruddin, how nice to see you. Oh, Nasruddin, how nice to see you. Thank you. She said, come, come and sit at the head of the table. Come and sit at the head of the table. Thank you. Please have some fatouche. Please have some fatouche. Thank you. Please have some makluba. Please have some of Please have some of this. Please have some of this. Thank 
thank you. And then Nasruddin took the makluba and he started to put it into his pocket. <laughs> he spread it all over his shirt. And he took the fatouche and he rubbed it into his trousers. And the host of the dinner party was furious and she said, Nasruddin, what are oh, you doing? Oh, Nasruddin, what are you doing? And Nasruddin said, well, I think you invited my clothes to the party, not me. I think you invited my clothes to the party, not me. I'm giving the food to my clothes. So give the food to my clothes. Thank you. Well, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Give them a round of applause. Oh. Sorry about that. Okay, I think I think we will leave it there. I'm just going to show you, just to give you a. Oops. These are some of the these are things that we've done today. So hopefully some of these activities you will be able to adapt. Uh, to use with your students. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. So now we have the uh, optional session.